Hello and welcome to Create Now, another singing lesson. Here we are now. Right, we are here and we're having a little look at. We're having a little look at something. We're back on. Uh, we're back on the Wikipedia page. Surprise. Um, we're gonna have a little look at chest and head voice. Mm. All right, chest and head voice. Chest voice and head voice are terms used within vocal music. The use of these terms vary widely within vocal pedagogical, that's P-E-D-A-G-O-G-I-C-A-L circles. And there is certainly no one consistent opinion among vocal performer professionals in regards those terms. Chest voice can be used in relation to a particular part of the vocal range of register. A vocal resonance area or a specific vocal timbre. Head voice can be used in relation to a particular part of the vocal range or type of vocal register or a vocal resonance area. In men, the head voice is commonly referred to as falsetto which is flippin' bollocks. <laughs> uh, sorry. History and development. Mm, right. So we've been talking about uh, soprano. Alto, tenor bass, STAB. A good bit. Um, and these are methods of classifying your voice into different registers. High, soprano, low, bass. Think of a low old man in the pub sipping a pint. Oh jeez. Oh, let me tell you a story now now. <laughs> and a high pitched, uh, uh, you know, like women are smaller than men. Oh hey darling. Kind of up, squeaky, major thirds. There we are. Uh, the first recorded mention of the terms chest voice. Also, um, if you're recording a female, uh, it's good to point it down towards their chest because it, it has a lot of resonance there. Um, and it's balanced because normally when you record a female, it's much more higher content, so you balance it out with the lower content. Similarly, uh, if you're singing a, a male, often you can, you record a, the microphone slanted and pointing towards the whichever resonance you want it focus on. Do you want to focus on the direct sound from the teeth, the sharpness? Do you want to get some of that nasal, uh, nasal, some of that nasal uh, resonance cavity? Or do you want to mostly, you go for like the forehead? Because uh, it's just that, isn't that feckin' watermelon that's vibrating in your head? Um, that's for regards what part, uh, a microphone placement is basically putting an ear up to what part of the sound you want to emphasize. Do you want to emphasize the lowness? If it's female, point at the chest, you want to emphasize the high range, you focus on the, the head voice. Alright. Uh, the first recorded mention of these terms, chest voice and head voice, was around the 13th century when it was distinguished from the throat vo voice. Jesus. Precocious, glotterous, capulous. At this time, it is likely that the head voice is referred to as falsetto range. Oh, uh, yeah. Don't know if that's falsetto. Uh, uh, <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Let's keep going. Um, throw voice. Yabba -dabba -dabba -dabba. At this point. At this time, it is likely that the head voice is referred to as falsetto by the writers, some lads, some old lads. Italian opera. Often, often people think uh, Italy is where the big, the big music boys hang out, all the big singers. Uh, Italy, Rome, church, singing, big halls. Um, what's also very interesting is depending on the the music is di dictated by the space so if the big choir big hall you got to sing long sustain like Are Maria. 
And little things like little decorations and stuff just get lost. So a lot of it's just long sustained because it's a long echo. Where if you're like going like uh Again, all that stuff's lost. Big echoes. Um, all that stuff. So, uh, fast stuff. If you're playing inside and outside, the performance and the songs can change. I'm sure you know that, whether you're in the park or you're in a fucking small apartment. You gotta adjust to the area, both volume and all sorts of stuff. All right, so initially, apparently, like, oh, they have opera, they're more trained for opera, big open spaces, loud voices without amplification. Modern voices are a lot more breathy, because uh, they don't need amplification. Um, if you're using breathiness, it loses from projection, uh, long sustain notes, you won't be able to do long sustain notes if you're doing breathiness. Because breathiness is, you're losing all the air. Um, that's why pop singers often use breathiness. Um, it can be a very in intimate thing, the breathy voice. Um, but it's not high volume. It's perceived high volume via amplification and so on. But anyway, let's keep going. Some people believe, by the way, that you should, only, you should practice singing with amplification, such as... Jeez, what's that name? Mark... Not Mark Doty. What's his name? Oh, that lad who has the four pillars of singing. Oh, jeez. He's Italian, I think. And he's also... He's, yeah, I don't want to say anything bad. He's, he's, he's good. He's good. He's good. Uh, you know, uh, musicians are quirky guys. And uh, I've learned a bit from this lad. Uh, his name is... ba ba da boo ba boo Oh baby. Sorry, I can't find the singer singer's name. But uh, yeah, he uh, he he, he uh, let's find this name. Four pillars of singing. He's one of the, you know, there's a lot of these online fucking gurus and sometimes just a lot of confidence. Here his name is Robert Blunty. All right, Robert Lunty, uh, I've studied his work extensively. Be sure to read the details at this bottom. Four Pillars of Singing, the world's most comprehensive and preferred home studying. Now, when he says the world's most thing, that just means he just says it is. Um, but advertising works like that, you know, the world's best coffee in this local shop. Well, it's not really the world's best coffee, it's just like an opinion, which is quite confusing. Um, I've been through countless, countless singing teachers, uh, both online, mostly just online, um, and they all have their good points and bad points. Um, I said I've learned a lot from these singers, teachers. Um, you have your likes like uh, Ken Tamplin, who teaches, you know, very rocky stuff, and then you got more Robert Lunty, a bit more Italian and what they call the maestros. And then you got other lads who are more into classical and so on. So personally, I like to have a wide palette of vocal tones to play with. Um, you can get locked down into either just rap or just fucking whatever you're into. You know yourself, just... You can get locked into a pattern and just be like, this is only me and I'm doing this and nothing, everything else is silly because this is how things are done and so on. And you don't really know anything. You're just like, oh, this singing teacher must... He sounds good, so you must know what's going on. There's a difference between them, up to sing and teach, and like I said, Robert Lundy, Ken Tamlin, top lads. Uh, and everyone's a critic, isn't that right? All right, here we go. <laughs> History and development. Um, ba, ba, ba. Italian opera singer method. The chest voice was identified as the lowest and head voice and the lowest and head voice and three vocal registers chest, passaggio and head registers this approach is still taught in some vocal pe what's a vocal pediologist? I don't know but <coughs> it is a <coughs> excuse me um <coughs> 
Hashtag no corona. Oh, jeez, a lot. Vocal pedagogy. It's a study of art. Uh, the science of voice instruction. Oh, that's pretty cool. All right. Is used for teaching singing and assists defining and what singing is and how it works and how proper thing is completed. Um, so yeah, teachers can be detrimental in a way. It's it's it's. it's fucking, you really have to just want anything in life. Yeah, gotta know what you're doing, what you want. Otherwise, you're just gonna end up going flipping and flopping between this and that, and you don't know what you want and so on. You gotta be like, what do I want to do? For me personally, I want to record an album, a song every day. So gotta focus on productivity uh, speed and so on and and so on it's just basic fucking you know yourself you want a certain wage you gotta go for a certain job and all just life decisions where do you want to live and so on let's stay focused the terms we later adopted within uh, bel canto the italian opera singing method so the thing about the italian method it's so interesting because it, it's based on no amplification so you have to be good you have to be loud, and if you do it wrong, you're going to lose your voice, and you can't perform the next day. It's a you got to perform like 70% of the time, all the time. Because if you perform 100%, you're sick the next day. And if you get really into it emotionally, it's so you get too into it, you lose your voice. Constantly check in. It's a, I, there's a lot more pressure on these fucking opera singers than. But that's why they're so good. They don't have auto tune. They just if they're good, they're good. If they're not good, they're not good. You can't hide behind a microphone, you can't hide behind a room. Uh Yeah, it's just a different it's a whole other thing. It's a whole other form of mastery. As you can imagine with anything form of mastery, whether it's being a dentist or whatever. There's a whole other philosophy and mindset and lifestyle behind it. This approach is still taught to by some uh, pediologists or whatever. Another current popular approach that is based on the bel canto model. Uh, I must say, of all the singing styles, I was least. I was happy with you know the two singers I mentioned before. V- v- is it speech level singing? That is one of the singing methods which I was very, very suspicious of. Um, I've. Seth Riggs, uh, speech level singing. Speech level singing is the refusal to reach SSL trains you not to reach high pitches, which means you relax the and uh, speech level position. This allows the vocal cords to adjust as pitches go through or down without disconnecting. All right. So uh, there was a he gave some lessons to uh, Michael Jackson. And he's very big in the hit album world and so on. Some people are really against some. Some this is like football. Some people really love some teams. Some really people love hate other teams. And some people believe only you do this way. Some people only do that way. Like if you want to sound like Eminem rapping, you probably shouldn't be doing fucking opera singing. Uh, it's all about what you want. Uh, and I like versatility. I like to be able to. Uh, you know, fucking. Or I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a song today. Grand. Play the drums. Play the bass. Play the guitar. Play the keyboard. Do the singing. Uh, make the music video. Send it on. Next day, same thing again. Uh, I don't I never know what kind of style of singing I'll need and so on. That's just me. That's what I want. I don't know what you guys want. Design your own model on whatever you want to achieve. This approach is still taught uh, by vocal lads is based on the Bel Camino divide both men and women's voices into three registers. Men and women men's voices are divided into chest register, head register and falsetto register. Now I would like to I'm personally trying to go into whistle right now, so uh, that the next register I need to relax my larynx and let it go up even higher, but right now I'm I'm stressing and it's cracking. So that's what I'm working on right now. Um, we all have our own little thing we're working on. <laughs> uh, let's see what's going on. Uh, another current uh, popular approach, uh, falsetto register, lovely. 
the woman's voices into chest register, middle register, and and head register. That's interesting because I'm not sure what the the woman's middle register is. I know what the head register is. Uh, such pedagogists <laughs> teach that the head register is a vocal technique used in singing to describe resonance felt in the singer's head. Yeah, it's absolutely. <laughs> These singing teachers, like I mentioned, like Ken Tamplin, Robert Lunty, and other lads, they can't, they, they're all going, just, do you hear the way I was bitching about three different singers? And they're all, they're all amazing singers. Um, but it's just that mad, the human, the human element to just nitpick at people, like, they're easily better singers than me, but I'm still going, oh yeah, but I don't like his pants, or something silly, like, or I don't like his politics, or something stupid, it's just, human nature's mad. Let's stay focused. However, as knowledge is physically has increased over the past 200 years, so has the understanding of physical process and singing uh, and vocal production. As well, as a result, many vocal pediologists, such as Rolf Appelman, one name, of India University, and William Vennard at the University of South Southern Carolina, have redefined or even abandoned the use of the terms of chest voice and head voice. Gee, talk about controversial. What I like about Wikipedia is that it loads of references. So, <laughs> uh, in particular, the use of these terms, chest register, head register, have become controversial since vocal registration is more commonly seen today as a product of, Jesus, larynx, larynx general, that's a, uh, the voice box um, uh, that is unrelated to the physiology of the chest. That's interesting. Lungs or head. For this reason, many vocal pediologists argue that it is meaningless to speak of registers being produced in the head or chest. They argue that the vibratory, thus vibration, sens sensations which are felt in these areas of resonance phenomena should be described in terms of related vocal resonance. That's very interesting. Not the registers. These vocal pediologists, as P-E-D-A-G-O-G, oh yes, yeah, it looks like ped and Google put together or something, the word, prefer the term chest voice and head voice over the term register. This view believes that the problems of which people identify as register problems are really problems with the resonance adjustment. We were talking about that yesterday, that's very interesting. Standing ways and so on. Um, this view is also an alignment with the view of the other academic fields and study vocal registration including speech pathology, phonics, that's how words are pronounced, and linguistics, uh, which is a specific study of language. Although both methods are still in use, current vocal pediology practice tends to adopt a newer scientific view. It's so interesting how people are just like, why do we sing? And people are like, oh, just fucking God, don't worry about it. And some people say, oh, if you just had, if you just had a really hard time in your life, you'll be a good singer. And, uh, you have a lot of issues and stuff to be a good singer. But it actually comes out to fuck it's all down to fucking resonance chambers and all this stuff. Like it's 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 not so much hocus pocus as uh, technique and, and so on. Maybe, who knows? Uh, it's debatable. The contemporary use of the term chest voice often refers to the specific kind of vocal correlation or vocal timbre. In classical singing, it is used limited entirely to the lower part of the modal register or normal voice M-O-D-A-L It's interesting Frequency used in speech Within other forms of singing Chest voice is often applied throughout the moral register Chest timbre can add wonderful arrays of sounds to a singer's voice Inter... Interperfative palate However, the use of the overlay, overly strong chest voice in the higher registers, in an attempt to hit higher notes in the chest voice can 
lead to forcing. Forcing can lead to consequently vocal degradation. Yeah, so heavy stuff there, lads. Heavy, heavy information. Um, so, jeez, it's all very good hearing about theory, but how does how does theory help you? Do you know what I mean? <laughs> like it, it, it'd be a lot easier if you just went right. This is how it works, and grand. But instead, they're like, oh, maybe this weapon, maybe this things, and. Uh, and other things, you know what I mean. Um, all right, so we talked about you know developing the voice, and it's just like going for a jog or or um, other physical activities. You're not going to be great at it for the first ages. You often you might be think you're good because of all the pop, the lovely you know happy feelings you get, and you think, oh, I'm a Britain singer. Um, but compared to others and so on, I don't know. It's it's, it's, it's hard. Anyway, listen, so this is uh, what it says about developing the singing voice. Uh, chest voice, head voice, uh, Wikipedia, here we go. Singing is a skill that requires highly developed muscle reflexes. It's so, like, subtle. Like, it, the tiniest little movement has such a effect. It's so, so subtle. Imagine, like, hitting a hammer and knocking down a wall. It's, that's so, it's, it's so... It's so effortless when you do it right. It just everything just. Do you only see a fucking craftsman doing doing a drawing a paint, and you're just like, wow, how would they do that? And they, it's the tiniest little bit of effort. Uh, it's all about vision, visualizing, and so on. It's it's absolutely mad. Singing does not require much muscle strength, but it does require a high degree of muscle coordination. Yeah, so it's absolutely mad. Individuals can develop their voices further through the careful and sympathetic practice of both songs and vocal exercise. So yeah, it's not just about exercises, it's it's singing itself and just even realizing yourself when you what you do when you how do you hurt your voice? Like I was kind of self taught growing up or whatever, so I'd lose my voice all the time and I'd always be like, How did I lose my voice? Like how would Axl Rose and all these singers be screaming every night and they just don't lose their voice? Um, a lot of it is down to if they have natural technique or just technique or fucking they listen to themselves or they practice a lot. Vocal exercises have several purposes, including warming up the voice, stretches, extend the range, extending vocal range, lovely, lining up the vocal horizonality. That's H O R I Z O N T A L L Y or versatility and acquiring vocal techniques such as legato. That's uh, staccato. Uh, 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 dynamics. I'm singing very soft. I'm singing very soft. Loud and <laughs> rapid fluctuations. Singing in a uh, sing wide intervals. Comfortably singing thrills. That's. A thrill, uh, singing uh, meslams, don't know what that is, or coordinating vocal faults. Melans is M E L I S M A N S, whatever that is. Vocal pathologists <laughs> instruct their students to exercise their voices in an intelligent manner. So, major scales up and down, do your, which is a nice, comfortable way of doing it. Uh, Singers should be thinking constantly about the kind of sound they are making and the kind of sensations they are feeling while they're singing. So true. But when you're young, you're just like, man, I'm buzzing off this coffee and oh, these girls are looking at me and fucking, oh, I'm also really shy and oh, did I sing it? All this mad shit goes on in your head when you're fucking singing and performing and putting yourself out there for scrutiny in front of the tribe and uh, up on the stage and what am I wearing and what are people thinking and is this the right song all these things uh, vocal pathologists instruct their students to exercise their voice in an intelligent manner um, singers should be thinking constantly about the way they sound and are making the kind of sensations they are feeling while they're singing learning to sing is an activity that benefits from the involvement of an instructor 
Um, yeah, you definitely learn a lot faster. A singer does not hear the same inside his or her head and sounds as outside. So that's why it's important to record yourself. Because there's uh, when you sing, your actual voice box distorts your ears. So what you're hearing is actually a distorted version of yourself. It's like having it's like having your speaker right next to your microphone and there's they're kind of like is it a feedback loop? I'm not sure, but there's a bit of distortion um going on there. Learning to sing is actively benefits your stuff. Singing does not hear the same as there. Uh, therefore, having a guide who can tell the student what kinds of sounds here one is producing corresponds to his required style of singing and students aims to recreate. Yeah. So yeah, if you can, it's uh, brilliant if you can have a singing teacher. Um, the better the singing teacher, the better, because you're only going to be as good as your teacher. And is your singer, is your teacher any good, or is the singer fucking shit? <laughs> but you can all, you can all, you can cancel that out by having loads of teachers and listening to yourself. Um, be, taking when you feel something wrong or you hear a teacher saying something wrong, it's important to, to question it, and not just go along with it. Um, hmm. Extending vocal range. Posture. So here's a little thing on posture. Uh, feet slightly apart, legs straight but knees slightly bent, hips facing straight forward, spine aligned, abdomen flat, chest comfy forward, chest shoulders down and back, head facing straight forward. All right. So here's a little bit on posture. Um, I normally say just, you know, fucking stand up straight, feet, shoulders with a power or something like that. Uh, power stance. Um, and grounding. Um, but there, they give off, you know, specific points rather than just my uh, advice or whatever. Here's the more on posture. The singing produces functions best when certain physical conditions of the body are put in place, such as standing up straight. The ability to move air in and out of the body freely and to obtain the needed quality of air can be seriously affected by the posture and various parts of the breathing mechanism. A so good chest position can limit the capacity of the lungs and a tense abdominal wall will inhibit the downfall travel of the uh, diaphragm. Good posture allows the breathing mechanism to fulfill its basic function efficiently without any undue expenditure of energy. Good posture also makes it easier to intile phenomenon I N I T I L E A T E something <laughs> and to, and tune resonances. You gotta constantly listen and change your resonances to be in tune. So, uh, alignment prevents unnecessary tension in the body. Focal pediologists have also noted that when singers assume good posture, it often provides them with a greater sense of self assurance and po poise while performing. Audiences also tend to respond better to singers with good posture. Yeah. Habitual good posture also ultimately improves the overall health of the body and by embedding better blood circulation, enabling better blood circulation and preventing fatigue. Shit, the stress of the body. All right, so there you are. It's good. Stand up. I'll keep, I'll keep going on. Stand up straight. Stand up straight. Stand up straight. Even if it's just for your own, for your own good, not getting, not getting robbed on the street. Um, all the things, you know, all the things. So this, um, stay focused, practice singing, keep humming, and uh, yeah, just fucking sing under your breath all day, man. Uh, enjoy it. Enjoy it.
and also be aware if you can. Alright, that's it. Over and out. Hope you have an awesome day. And that's it. Goodbye.